Good afternoon. This is Point of View with Shirley Polk. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. I am so thankful to God for everything that he's doing, everything he's going to do. And he is doing so much in my life, and I am so thankful to him for everything that he's doing in my life. It's a wonderful thing to be able to say to God, I thank you in spite of everything, the things that come and go, the people that uh, are gone out of your life right now, that you were talking to them maybe today, and they're gone today, you know, and it, it hurts, but we have to keep on moving in the name of the Lord. And I am so, so thankful that God gives strength where strength is needed, and he keeps us happy in him. And so my question to you today is, are you happy? I am happy in spite of the things that are going on in my life and uh, the, the events and just so many things have transpired, but I am happy. I'm happy, and I thank God because he has put his spirit in me and that helps me to be happy and if you remember on facebook those of you who are friends with me on facebook i put uh the comment on there about god giving me a peace and the contentment that i've never ever felt before in my whole life and he yet is he sustaining me to this time and i am so thankful i am so thankful it's a peace that's really indescribable it's a contentment and you just i mean it's just so wonderful and while i was writing the post that day god told me this is perfect peace and how do we get perfect peace when our minds are stayed on him and if we have perfect peace that means that we can be happy in the lord i am so so thankful this is part of you as i stated with shirley polk our telephone number is 214-403-7563 the email address is the point of you one at yahoo.com. All right, I'm going, are you happy? Now, I'm going to do the definition of happy according to Webster. And according to Webster, okay? Favored by luck or fortune, fortunate, a happy coincidence, for example. Notably fitting, effective, or well adapted, felicitous, enjoying or characterized by well being and contentment. And then expressing, reflecting, or suggestive of happiness, glad, pleased, having or marked by an atmosphere of good fellowship, friendly, all right, characterized by a day's irresponsible state, impulsively or obsessively quick to use or do something, trigger, enthusiastic about something to the point of obsession, happy, 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 all right, that's according to Webster. Now, I've also got to go, you know, I've got to go to the Bible and talk a little bit about being happy. Psalms, the 40th chapter, the fourth verse, according to the Christian Standard Bible, how happy is anyone who has put his trust in the Lord and has not turned to the proud or to those who run after lies. Uh, how happy are those who reside in your house, who praise you continually. See, uh, that's Psalms, the 84th chapter in the fourth verse happy is the person that trusts in you lord of armies happy is the person that trusts in the lord psalm 84 12 happy are the people who know the joyful shout lord they walk in the light from your face happy 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 how happy are those who uphold justice who practice righteousness at all times those are psalm scriptures in, in, in the book of Psalms. Okay, now let me go to my article here. Are you happy? There are 14 signs that you're really happy, okay, and how to stay that way. And I'm in HuffingtonPost.com, HuffingtonPost.com. I haven't been in there a while, okay, but as you know, I'm just getting back into my webcast mode because I've been off for, well, now it's been... Today, it would really be a month when my schedule has, has not been a regular schedule because um, of things that have happened in, in my life, okay? And then the cold that caught up with me, and I thank God I'm much better, and uh, I went out in the night air last night, and that wasn't good for me. So today, I've been, uh, I took a couple of tablespoons of my remedy, and so that helped me and loosened up things in, inside, you know, to bring that uh, congestion out of me, so I'm so thankful for that. So I'm getting better and better, and I am so happy, okay? 14 signs you're really happy and how to stay that way. 14 signs you're really happy and how to stay that way. All right, I'm going to get right into it. If I can increase my font here, I'm trying to increase it, so let me see what's happening here. All right, I'm going to increase it. You can call me if you would like to take part in 
the live webcast today. Give me your comments. I'm trying my best to get this uh, font up. Okay. If someone on the street asks you if you're happy, what would you say? If someone on the street passing by asks you, are you happy? What would you say? Many factors influence how we feel on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's a struggle at work or an issue in our personal lives, and most of them can decline our feelings of positivity and well-being. How well do we know that, huh? And we aren't alone. We're not alone, okay? According to the 2013 World Happiness Report, so we can tell this, is, this has been a while since this has been written, but still good, okay? North American countries are less happy now than they were five years ago. But as scientific research has discovered, happiness to some extent is a choice. So why does it sometimes feel so hard to choose it? Why does it feel so hard to choose happiness at certain times, okay? Now let me make sure that everything is going well with the camera and everything. All right, now, one answer is a bit surprising. As it turns out, we may be more joyful than we realize. We just aren't mindful of the signs. So while no one can escape the pressures of jobs, inevitable conflicts, and even bouts of depression and anxiety, much of our emotional well-being isn't entirely dependent on external circumstance, all right? So to find more happiness, you might just want to look on the bright side. So here are 14 signs that you really do have a sunny disposition, 14 signs, and then how to keep the sunny disposition. You want others to share your happiness. So whether it's paying someone a compliment or performing a random act of kindness, when you're really happy, you want others to be happy too. And that's a fact. And sharing the joy can help continue those personal feelings or those positive feelings. Studies have shown that being kind to others can actually help increase your overall happiness levels. Next, you don't sweat the small stuff. We're talking about 14 signs. You're really happy and how to stay that way. And we really need this webcast today, don't we? We really need it. In spite of the things that are happening in our lives, we want to be happy. We want to be content. And so we have 14 signs to know if you really are, all right? You don't sweat the small stuff. Did you just miss the train? Did you spill your coffee? It doesn't matter. If focusing on what's important and not obsessing over minor annoyances is a priority of yours, it may be a sign that you are in a good place. Research has shown that those who swap focusing on the small, everyday negatives for emphasis are brief, uh, on, uh, you know, on brief, joyful moments, tend to be happier overall. Now let me do that again. Research has shown that those who swap focusing on the small, everyday negatives for emphasis on brief, joyful moments tend to be happier overall. Happy people don't deny that there are peaks and valleys in life, but by concentrating on what goes right instead of what goes wrong, you set yourself up for longer-term contentment and greater resilience when dealing with negative events. Oh my, this is so good. In fact, you appreciate the little things. You appreciate the little things. Now, I'm going to do an adjustment here on my uh, video so that I can make sure that I monitor this correctly, make sure that everything is going well. So, I'm going to put that to the side. Put it to the side. Okay. Now, I want to take this. Just bear with me here, please. Take this and move it over just a little bit and share this page. I'm sharing the page with these tabs, okay? So, talking about 14 signs that you're really happy and how to stay that way. You appreciate the little things, okay? Nothing is greater than hearing your favorite song come on the radio or being outside hearing a few words chirp. The little things are what contentment is composed of. And make sure I get this right. I think I might have this just too small. Okay, let me do this. Let me spread this just a little bit, do a little bit of adjusting here. Okay, that's going to work just fine. Just fine. You can call me at 214 or email me at the point of view one at yahoo.com. It's the number one, okay? Nothing is greater than hearing your favorite song come on the radio or being outside and hearing a few birds chirp. 
the little things of what contentment is composed of, and you recognize that. Studies have shown that practicing gratitude is a key component to a happy life. And if you're thankful for the little things that make you smile, then it's a good sign you're on the right path. That is so true. And next, you're proud of others' successes. Now, this is so good. And this should be something that we work on. We work on being proud for other people's successes. All right? Not being selfish and jealous and all of that. Being proud. These are signs that you're really happy. That you're really, really happy. All right? Now... When you're happy, not only do you revel in your own accomplishments, you also bask in the success of others as well. You know that celebrating other people's victories connects you to others and offers a bit of good karma in the form of maintaining your own sunny outlook. So as a motivational speaker and coach, Ty Goodwin explained in her blog on the Huffington Post, Expressing genuine joy for other people can really pay off when it comes to your own happiness. When it comes to your own happiness, and here's a, here's a, a paragraph here, rejoicing with others creates an opportunity to multiply the good times you get to celebrate. So by seizing every chance to sincerely congratulate others on their success, you are creating an atmosphere for others to be willing to celebrate your successes. And I practice this. I want to be happy for others. I want to be happy. And you know, there is enough room in this world for everybody to do their thing. There's no need for envy, strife, jealousy, and all of that. Because our God is so great. And he has everything figured out even before he made Adam. He had everything figured out, that there's enough room on earth for all of my people that will be on earth, and there is enough room, there are enough occupations, there are enough everything, there are enough hobbies where everybody can do their own thing and not step on the other person's territory. It's a fact. It's a fact. Because nobody can do what you do exactly like you do. They can copy whatever they want to do, but they can never do it exactly like you. So you don't have a reason to be jealous. And they certainly don't have a reason to be jealous. But the point is right here is that we focus on ourselves and make sure that we're not jealous of what other people do and that we're focusing on our happiness and wanting other people to be happy just like us. So rejoicing with others creates an opportunity to multiply the good times you get to celebrate. So by seizing every chance to sincerely congratulate others on their success, you are creating an atmosphere for others to be willing to celebrate your successes. It's, it's good. It's good, okay? 14 signs you're really happy and how to stay that way. Living in the moment is very important to you. Happy people know that living in the here and now is key to perpetuating a positive disposition. In his TED Talk on how to be happy with her, happiness researcher Matt Killingsworth detailed how getting lost in the present moment actually increases our feelings of joy. Getting lost in the present moment actually increases our feelings of joy. So after developing an app that measures happiness in real time, Killingsworth found that most people were at their happiest when they were focusing on the current moment. So as human beings, we have the unique ability to have our minds stray away from the present, Killingsworth said in the November 2012 talk. He said maybe to really be happy, we need to stay completely immersed and focused on our experience in the moment. As it turns out, people are sub substantially less happy when their minds are wandering than when they are not. And let me just tell you, I want to share this with you. Just a few moments ago, and I, I was thinking, you know, and this is the 15th. This is the 15th. And so it just kind of, um, I was reminded of it. And when I made a phone call, and then it just came to me, this is the 15th. And so it, it just kind of shook me a little bit. And so the thing that I did, I haven't done my broadcast today. This is what I'm saying. It's coming to my mind. And God is reminding me, you haven't done your broadcast. Keep your mind occupied. Go do your broadcast. And I said, yes, God, I am. Because, see, I'm happy doing this and keeping my mind occupied so that I won't dwell on the sadness. All right? I won't dwell on the sadness. 14 signs you're really happy and stay that way. 
you're in a healthy relationship and not just with your significant other. This is important, okay? You're in a healthy relationship and not just with your significant others. Now, I can count my friends on my fingers, and, and people use the word friends loosely, I believe. Everybody's not your friend. You have acquaintances, you have associates, but we have very few friends, all right? So, I'm thankful for the ones who are in my life. And I was telling a lady today, I said, I'm thankful that you're in my life and that you're my friend because I'm very, very particular about who I call friend, all right? And anybody that knows me knows that about me, all right? And I told her that I appreciate her. And then she's a mentor to me also. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. And then um, another friend, we went out yesterday and had our Valentine buffet these two little ladies <laughs> and so uh she called me today and told me you know she was still basking and uh and thinking about yesterday what a good time we had out at the buffet and talking and discussing things and then we both when we opened our fortune cookies i told her i read mine to her and then she opened hers and hers was the same fortune and those of you who are my friend or friends on facebook you saw that i put those two up there they're exactly alike they're exactly alike. And so we talked about that. So I thank God for the uh, ladies in my life who I can call friend. And we have wholesome conversations and we share uh, and talk about God. We talk about everyday life and things. We have wholesome conversations and we help each other to the best of our ability. So I'm thankful for the people who are in my life. I'm so, so thankful. So thankful. So as a happy individual, you know that people, not things, are the key, they're the true keys to a joyful existence, all right? Physical and emotional intimacy are both important contributors when it comes to maintaining overall happiness levels. So, and like I said a few minutes ago, uh, we had the year 2013 come up in this article. Now we're going to 2012, so we know this article is a few years old, but it's still good for the present day, okay? So in a 2012 study published in the Journal of Research, and personality, researchers found that marriage can protect against the normal declines in happiness level that may occur during adulthood, but you're also deeply aware that's not the only critical component to building a happy life. By making sure you have, by making sure you have an extended social circle, you open yourself up for more joy, especially as you get older. So true. And as we age, you know, people are transitioning from this life and going on. And then some people that you come in contact with, like classmates and people that you might not have seen 30 and 40 years, different, you know, your circle, your social circle. So by making sure you have an extended social circle, social circle. I know I did that little paragraph in there because my mind is going as I'm reading, okay? So by making sure you have an extended social circle, you open yourself up to more joy, especially as you get older. According to a study published by the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health, being surrounded by a larger social circle during midlife has a positive impact on psychological well-being. So by keeping healthy, interactive relationships with friends and significant others, you're making a large contribution to your overall happiness. So when something is stressing you out, you know how to calm down. That's the next one of the 14. When something is stressing you out, you know how to calm down. So this is another sign that you're really happy. And then you know how to stay happy, okay? Now, keeping stress at a minimum is key to a happier lifestyle. And if you're really happy, chances are you found some stress relieving practices that work for you. And so like I was just telling you just a few minutes ago, I really did, because this is the 15th, and then... I, uh, it just rushed in on me. And then I said, that's when I told you the spirit of the Lord said, do you webcast? You haven't done your webcast to occupy your mind. And so this keeps me going. It keeps me going and it makes me happy. Okay. So keeping stress at a minimum is key to a happier lifestyle. And if you're really happy, chances are, I know I'm repeating this, okay, you found some stress relieving practices that work for you. And so this webcast is a stress reliever for me. Because the information that I get, it helps me and it helps others too. It helps others too. And I thank God that I, I've been 
uh, told and encouraged that uh, by people who are watching and listening to me. I am so thankful for that. And of course, this is going on four years that I've been on the World Wide Web doing Point of View with Shirley Pope and Greater Gospel Temple and Inspiration of God Ministries. And so people are watching and they're listening. And I'm so thankful for that. And just a few weeks ago, I was discussing uh, the webcast and um, a dear friend of mine, and you know, like today is the 15th and he's no longer with us. He On the 15th of January, he transitioned. And uh, he he was, you know, we were talking about the webcast because he was my number one, <laughs> number one fan. And so we talk about them. So when I do a webcast, I just send it on to him, you know, send the link on to him. And then we would talk about it and everything. So it was the week before he transitioned and we were talking about it. He And he just encouraged me so much. He said, you know, your webcasts are phenomenal. And he, and so, and so I said, well, is there something do you have, you know, you have any uh, thing you can critique me on or any suggestions, anything? He said, now that you've asked, okay, and then he went down the line. You can do this, you need to do this, you can do this. He critiqued me, and I told him, thank you, I really appreciate it. So when I did the next webcast, I sent it to him, and he said, because he had already told me that they're phenomenal, but, you know, you can do this, or you not do this, you can do that. Not. And so I took his advice, and so when I did the next one, I sent it to him, and he said, yes. That's it. And I appreciate my friend and I miss him so, so, so much. I, I really miss him. You know? And so, uh, but, but we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. I thank God for happiness. That peace and that happiness that God gives is beyond, beyond understanding. I tell you, there's a perfect peace that God can give you. There's a perfect peace. All right. So, I'm going to go back over this. Keeping stress at a minimum is key to a happier lifestyle. And if you're really happy, chances are you find stress relieving practices that work for you. And so it's important at the first sign of stress that you have go-to strategies because it allows your brain to stay more flexible. So Hannah tells the Huffington Post, all right? That's what Hannah said. Now, by having certain tricks like taking a break or meditating, you can think more positively and practice things like gratitude because you, your brain is more open to seeing the positive around you. So studies have shown that practicing meditation or spending a chunk of time exercising each day can not only lower your stress levels, but it can also make you a more positive individual. So burning off some steam with your best friend can also help reduce anxiety and increase your happiness levels. So whatever method it is, you know what works for you in times of distress and you use it whenever necessary in order to keep those bad vibes in check and I, and I know I, I get back to it but you know having someone to talk to like on a daily basis is someone you're not running people down you're not uh, talking negative talk you have positive conversation and you can help each other out you know in, in different areas of your life when those conversations stop, you know it's hard and you have to do some adjustments and there's nothing you can do about it when the person transitions into eternity. So I want to stop here and say cherish the friendships that you have. Cherish the people in your lives, okay? So now, let me go back and say and you use it whenever necessary in order to keep those bad vibes and check. So whatever your method is for being happy. And what I do is I think on the good conversations. And like I said, God has given me that peace, that peace. He's given it to me and I thank him for it. And so whenever I, I start thinking about it, I have just good memories to think about. Good memories. And, and I'm so thankful for that. Now, Another one is 14 of the 14 signs you're really happy. You've gotten your affluenza shot. Now, I didn't say influenza, 
I said affluenza shot, okay? Now, happy people know that money isn't the influencer of joy. In fact, after a certain point, it may even hurt their well-being. So recent data has suggested that people who pursue material goods as opposed to the pursuit of emotional fulfillment tend to be less satisfied and express fewer positive emotions each day. So instead of seeking the latest gadget in the store, you're seeking other things like good relationships that have a positive impact on your life. And that is making a significant contribution to your overall happiness. Next, you're constantly adopting a glass half full mentality, okay? You're constantly adapting or adopting, excuse me, a glass half full mentality. So when you're happy, you want to do everything in your power to make sure you're capitalizing on those emotions. So when life throws you a lemon, you throw a party, all right? <laughs> Adopting a realistic, optimistic attitude has been linked to greater success and overall happiness. And optimists even have healthier hearts and stronger immune systems. So if you're constantly looking on the bright side, even when it's a challenging situation that would normally get you down, you know overall you're really happy with life because you intend to keep it that way. How about that? Now, next, you have a sister. All right. Now, you may not think of your little sister as the key to your happiness or your older sister as an optimistic influence, but research conducted by the university of Ulster suggests otherwise. So the 2011 findings show that having at least one female sibling made both young men and women more able to communicate effectively and maintain positive emotions. And I can certain, certainly attest to that. I have three sisters three younger sisters and I am so thankful for my sisters and then I have three brothers left I have four brothers but Danny has transitioned and that was years ago but yes this is so true about the sisters because I can call them and I can talk and I can cry whatever I need to do they're there for me they're there for me and I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, and I'm there for them, and I'm ready to get on that road to Louisiana and go and visit too. All right, getting back, I'm going to do what my my uh, mentor, my critic told me, okay? I'm getting back to the subject, all right? The 2011 findings show that having at least one female sibling, I repeat, made both young men and women able to communicate effectively and maintain positive emotions. Next, making new friends seems to come easy for you. And that, that is so true. If you're happy, all right? Signs you're really happy and how to stay happy. Making new friends comes, you know, easy. I'm telling you, I was, and, and the lady and I are Facebook friends, as a matter of fact, the day we met, which was the 12th of January. And I was so excited about it. Uh, the lady's name, last names of Hope Davis. Uh, Hope Davis. And we are friends on Facebook now. We hit it off. We hit it off. And I tell you, now how... Well, let me see. How should I? Let me see. What did I put about those fortune cookies? What are the odds in that? What are the odds in that? Okay, people want to surround themselves with those who make them feel good, so others are easily drawn to you. 
So in a study published by the British Medical Journal, people naturally choose to connect with those who are happy because it improves their own happiness levels. Now, research has found that if a social contact is happy, it can increase the likelihood that you are happy by 15%. They have it down to a science, don't they? Now, you've reached a goal. 14 signs you're really happy. You've reached a goal, and you have more you want to accomplish. There's nothing like reaching that goal. How about that? You've reached a goal and you have more you want to accomplish. If you're really happy, chances are your feelings have been reinforced by obtaining goals you've set for yourself, and you're not stopping there. A 2011 study published by the Journal of Consumer Research found that those who set themselves up for higher goals tend to be more satisfied with their lives than those who keep lower expectations. And it makes sense. Having something to work toward and then ultimately achieving it can help boost our feelings of personal work. So as Carl Carlton University psychology professor, Timothy Cycle explained in 2008 Psychology Today essay, pursuing our passions just makes us feel good, and it really does, pursuing our passions. Progress on our goals makes us feel happier and more satisfied with life. Cycle wrote, interestingly, positive emotions have the potential to motivate goal-directed behavior and volitional processes that are necessary for further goal progress or attainment. Now, you say cheese is the next one. I'm taking my time with this, but I'm almost finished, okay? This is very important. Are you happy? And here are 14 signs that you can tell that you're happy and then you can stay happy. And as I said, this is from HuffingtonPost.com. Now, can your yearbook photo offer insight into your happiness? Possibly, according to a DuPaul University study, adults who fashioned big grins in their school photos were actually less likely to be unhappily divorced decades later. The explanation with the most support is that people who smile in their photographs have a more positive disposition and more extensive social network. So when the throws, when life throws us inevitable curveballs, those with a positive emotional disposition and strong social support tend to thrive explained study researcher Matthew Hardenstein in his book, The Tale, The Little Clues That Reveal Big Truths About Who We Are. All right? So if you can't stop grinning from ear to ear whenever there's a camera around, there's a good chance you're actually boasting a positive disposition. I like that. Next, and I believe this is the last one. There's nothing keeping you tossing and turning at night. Thank you, Jesus. You may not think that you're feeling content, but if you're not tossing and turning, it may be a sign that you're living a life of happiness. A 2013 Cornell University study found that those who have consistent positive emotions tend to get a better night's sleep. So researchers studied 100 participants and found that those whose reactions vary to life's daily ups and downs tend to suffer in sleeping quality compared to those who have stable, optimistic outlooks. And that's the last one. We were talking about 14 signs. You're really happy and how to stay that way. So I want to say to you that it's a blessing 
It's such a blessing. And many of you already know this. And many know it, but we don't act like we know it, okay? But it's a blessing when God has people in your life, in your life, that you can talk with, that you can share your dreams, your ambitions, and all of those things with. When you have somebody like that in your life, you cherish them. With all you have to cherish them. Cherish them. All right? Good friends. Wait, I should say this. Friends are very few. So when you have one, you make sure that you be the friend to them that they are to you. All right? Make sure of that. So these 14 signs that you're happy, I hope that they've helped you and they've given you something something to think about. And you know, I'm so thankful. Even though we have friends who have transitioned, God always has someone to fill the void. You know, and that could be a person that has already been in your life for a while. But he has, God sees about us. I just want to tell you that. God sees about us. And we cannot change things. We cannot change things. So when a person has transitioned and God has called them into judgment, we can't do anything about that. So we are to go on and live and be happy and remember the good times that you shared with those people in your life. And don't stop living. Don't stop living because the people that you've had this friendship with and the people that love you, they would not want you to stop living. All right? So continue to love the Lord and live the life that he has set before you and be happy. All right? This is Point of view with Shirley Pope to one four four zero three seven five six three. The point of view one at yahoo.com. Enjoy the remainder of your day, and tomorrow, God willing, I will be back on the world wide web.